to Vision Sunday. I'm Kirk Nugent, and I get to host this show with Pastor Devlier Snell. Yes, sir. My friend, it's Vision <laughs> Sunday. Listen, I want you to know that this space has been created, crafted with leaders in mind. That's right. And, and so it doesn't matter what you lead. No. Maybe you lead a small group, That's a it. book club, That's a it. church, a deacon's board, uh, a Fortune 500 company. Man, we're going to be sharing some things with you today that are going to be a blessing. Absolutely. They're going to equip and inspire you for the journey ahead. Listen, listen, we hope that you've been enjoying all of the shows that make up Fresh Start Sundays mm -hmm. from your breath of life. And today we are going to get into vision. We're going to yep. get into all the different things that are for leaders. Mm -hmm. And we have a guest as well. But before we get into any of that, mm -hmm. we want to talk about what leadership is not. Yeah. Leadership yeah. is not. That's yeah. our first segment. And we want we, you. We try to demythicize yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. what leadership is and what yeah. it is. Yeah. And we want you to put yours in the comments as well. Mm -hmm. If you have some things that you feel leadership is not, go mm -hmm. ahead and fill in that blank. Leadership is not yeah. dot, dot, dot. Um, I'm going to go first this time. All right, you got it. Because I let you go first last no, time. No. I, I I don't know if that was a good idea for me. You got it. But leadership, family, is not status. Ooh. Oh. Leadership, leadership does not mean you have arrived right. or have yeah. attained. Mm -hmm. uh, leadership, if we flip the pyramid upside down, mm -hmm. means that you, who quote unquote sit at the top, mm -hmm. are responsible for everyone that is in that organization. Sure. Leadership comes with heavy weight. Mm -hmm. Leadership means that you are actually the chief servant, servant. as opposed to the person who is yeah. to be served. served. So yeah. leadership is, is something that we should take on with yeah. reverence, mm -hmm. with pause. Uh, you should think about that thing, pray about that thing, mm -hmm. be certain that this is something that you want to do because leadership is not yeah. status. That's the word. So yeah. it's, not, yeah. it's not about titles. No. Because no. one of the things about leaders is a lot of times the leader is not the person that has the title, no. the position, it's, the badge. It's true. Yeah, yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. The keys. Yeah. Yeah. Matter of fact, if you give status to somebody who is not a leader, that's right. Uh, you give them a title. <laughs> you, you, you can mess it up. You're actually creating a monster. <laughs> so that, that, that's good stuff. Absolutely. I appreciate that word. Absolutely. Um, so one of the things I want to add in terms of what leadership is not, leadership is not a thrill. Mm. So there are certain things about leading that are thrilling and exciting. But most days, and I think this is like the, yeah. the myth, yeah. when you look at somebody that's successful at leading a, 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 a company, yeah. a, a job, a, a ministry, like yeah. man, from the outside, it looks thrilling. There's somebody that, that wrote something, and I'll never forget, it says success does not feel successful mm. because it has a certain look, but that's not the way it feels. feels. So that most days as a leader, this is the just the hard, honest truth. It's going to feel like a grind. Mm. Uh, there are a lot of details. Leadership is getting up early, is staying up late, yeah. is being the first to arrive, yeah. the last one to leave. Mm. It's being the one that gets blamed when things That's that it. when things don't go well. That's right. And then it's ultimately sharing the credit with those yeah. who make it. You gotta happen. disperse it. That's and right. so you gotta yeah. realize that leadership doesn't always feel good. Mm. There's not a warm sensation. It's the heavy weight um, that kind of comes along with being the one that God lays hands, hands on. upon. And so I just want to just encourage somebody yeah. to know that's feeling discouraged or like, man, it shouldn't be that like, hard. Oh, yeah. Nope, that's the path. And that's how much it costs. <laughs> um, you know, one of the things you say about progress is that progress is always expensive. Yes. It never goes on sale. <laughs> You'll never be able to get it. Buy one, get one free. No way, no like, You've got to really be able to embrace, man, the weight and just the the hard yeah. part of leadership. Right. There are people that like the title yeah. or just when it goes Status, well, right. mm -hmm. but the leadership is, leader is the one they look to when everything is falling apart. Yeah, right. they're, they're blowing up your phone. Yeah, yeah. So leadership doesn't always feel good. It's not a thrill. Mm. Leadership is not a thrill. Mm. Leadership is not status. And we want you to engage with us in the comments. Let us know some of the things that you mm -hmm. feel leadership is not. Yeah. And as you do that, we are excited to jump into another video parable. I love these. Yeah, uh, these are. These, yeah. are. these are powerful. So, they, they drive the point home. Uh, absolutely. Matter of fact, if we just make this show all parables. <laughs> It'll be easier, but it's, it's, it's going to be a blessing to you. So let's look at that parable right now. Okay, Mr. Carmichael. It says here you're a truck driver and you're having trouble seeing at night. That is correct. You know, I had a few accidents, so HR asked me to come here to see you. Gotcha. Okay, let's just do a quick test and see how your vision is. Just take a look at the screen for me, please. Okay, what letters do you see? I don't see any letters. I'm sorry. 
It's quite all right. Even I need my glass to see something that small. What about this? Any better? No, I don't see anything. Hmm, really? What about this one? No, I don't see nothing, doctor. You can't see that, Mr. Carmichael? You can't tell me what any of those letters are. Now you know why I'm worried. I am too, frankly. I drive trucks for a living. I can't have you out on the highway like this. Lives are at risk. I need to look in your eyes to see if we're dealing with any... Mr. Carmichael? Yes. You, um... You think maybe it'd be easier for you to see if you took off the blindfold? Oh, no. I'm very comfortable with it on. Wait, are... You're at the will like this? It's illegal. Take it off. Well, if you can make the letters just a little bit brighter, it may well help. You see, my last accident was a real doozy. Man, I absolutely love those videos. I, I'm a visual person. I'm a visual mm -hmm. learner, yep. hands-on. Mm -hmm. And so those videos, you I never get tired of them. Yeah. So uh, excited about these video parables. And you know what? We're going to make that into a, a little playlist that by oh, themselves. Yeah. Yeah, that's that it. could be yeah. content that, that you can share. Yeah. A little 90-second video. It I is. think that'll be absolutely Because what it does is it, is it staples Ooh, the point yeah. to the heart so that it, it doesn't get lost in the ether of life. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and it's a great conversation starter as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we we want to dive into our core components, right? Yeah. Strengthening your core. We mm -hmm. love this segment of the show where we get a chance to share with you some, some key leadership yeah. principles, visionary principles and practices that will help to really strengthen your core. Mm -hmm. and, and, and Doc, what are we, what's, on the, what's on deck for today? So man, there's a core value that I want to espouse real quick. And, and it's just the value of paying attention to the details. details. So vision may start out as being very amorphous, mm -hmm. like big and without form. But once it comes into being, it, got, it has, has structure yeah, to it. Yeah. And so one of the things about leadership is that it's very detailed. There's a great book called Axiom by Bill Hybels. And uh -huh. there's a chapter entitled Sweat the Small Stuff. That's good. So when we talk about being detailed, it's not just about laying out this large, grandiose, man, countercultural vision. Man, but once you get into the implementation stage, it's about checking and rechecking. It's about making sure that those that are going to help you execute the vision, that they have clarity about specifically what their role is, when the role is supposed to be executed, how it's supposed to be executed, and that there's not a gap between your expectations and theirs. Yes, yeah. In fact, the larger the gap yeah. <laughs> between what you expect and what they expect, mm. the more disharmony right. you're actually it's gonna have in your organization, yes. your group, or the church that you're, you're managing. Mm -hmm. And so you gotta make sure you pay attention to the details. 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 The other thing you'll, you'll realize is that you've not paid attention to the details if it's all in your head. Mercy. So, so that when it's all in your head, the only person that sees it clearly is you. you. So you gotta make sure that you write it down, that it can be referred back to by those who are helping you implement or execute that particular vision that you check and recheck. And then one of the things, uh, there's a great chapter in that same book I referenced that's entitled Vision Leaks. Mm. So even when you think vision you've leaks. made it clear, yeah. uh, sometimes the vision is like that balloon you get on Valentine's Day or Mother's Day. <laughs> it's All right, it's, at first it's full of, full of helium, <laughs> yeah. it's on the ceiling. ceiling. Yeah, yeah. But over the course of time, kinda, it begins to leak. Yeah. And before you know it, it's kind of on the floor, floor somewhere. It's gone, it's flat, yeah. So, so the same way, you kind of lay out the vision for your group, your company, your organization. Man, everybody's full of vision at first, yeah. but by the time you get to that next week, it's leaking, it's, it's yeah. leaking, it's leaking. Mm. And now you're frustrated because you're like, man, I made that really, really clear. Yeah. But no, you've got to continue to refuel, mm. refill, and reinforce. That's good. And you got to pay attention to the details. So there may be times where this may come across as like micromanaging. No, you're not micromanaging the people, you're micromanaging the process. Yeah. And one of the things that you'll learn is that if you're ultimately held accountable for it as the leader, mm. you've got to make sure that you're detailed to make sure that your leadership reflects true value, Right. principle and right priority man man one of the things that's 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 absolutely phenomenal mm -hmm. doc uh one of the things with being 
uh, paying attention to the details yeah. is that you also need to be compassionate. Compassionate. And that's the yeah. other core component that we want to, to and tie And we think into. those things are yeah. sometimes in conflict. No, they're not. No, they don't have to no, be. No, they don't yeah. have to be. Because when you have that big vision and you do want your team, mm -hmm. you want those that you're leading to yeah. really execute, and you know, you have the vision leaks that happen as well, you do need to see these people as mm -hmm. people. People, See yeah. them as, you know, the sum total of their full story. Yeah. So sometimes yeah. that might mean getting to know them a little bit better. Yeah. That yeah. might mean getting into the trenches with them mm -hmm. at some points, just to fully understand what it takes for them to fully mm -hmm. uh, execute their portion yeah. of the work. Um, so many churches that I've had the opportunity to work with from a media standpoint uh, to, to work with their media team and their leadership yeah. teams. And what I've always recognized is that there is not a shared understanding of what what each has to do mm -hmm. to fulfill the vision. Yeah. The the media guy doesn't understand what the pastor has to right. do. Yeah. And then the pastor doesn't really understand uh, what it's going to take. Yeah. And, and bring, bridging that gap, having mm -hmm. that shared compassion yeah. really helps for them both to work together better mm -hmm. and for them to achieve what God has placed in their hearts. Compassion yeah. is one of those core components man. that's critical. There's some heavy man that's just meant. So as you say that, because we sometimes the leader thinks my job is to uh, complete task. That's right. But if you help complete people, people. then the people will complete, complete the, the task tasks. and it functions in an exponential My way goodness, when you good. put the people before, before the, the task. task. Yeah. Oh yeah. man, yeah. that's good, man. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. The leadership core component piece has, yeah. has been really good today. Mm -hmm. We hope that you will resonate with that as well. Strengthening that core. Strengthening the core. When you strengthen the core, the limbs oh, will function everything. well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we, we're excited to jump into uh, our interview with Terrell Davis. Yeah. Join us for that interview right now. Welcome, 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 man. We are excited to have with us in studio, Mr. Terrell Davis, man. This guy right here is a serial entrepreneur. If you don't yeah. know what that means, man, this guy has started finance business, mm -hmm. accounting businesses, a ride sharing app. He's also done a limo business. And now he's into the customer service and food industry yeah. uh, with Superhero Chefs. Terrell, we want to welcome you to Vision Sunday, man. Thank you, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here and excited. You know, the show. Man, th game. this, Kurt, gives me so <laughs> much on, joy. Come on, come on, come on. So for those who don't know, this is Terrell Davis. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he is from Lexington, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. That's right. Or, you know, part of his upbringing was in Lexington, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. I was a pastor in Lex Lexington oh. uh, from 2002 yeah. to 2006. He was a teenager then. Yeah. And it's crazy because like this accomplished business entrepreneur, Absolutely. venture capitalist. That's exactly right. He, yeah. he had a mischief, <laughs> uh, mischievous <laughs> nature to him. Yes, yes, yes. So I was the Tell pastor, the but then I was also our our basketball coach for okay. our team. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Terrell didn't get off the, the bench much. I didn't, oh, you know, oh, not at all. But, but, but he, oh, man, his mind was always working. You can wow. see the wheels turning wow. in his head. And it was amazing because I think he moved to Atlanta yeah. shortly before I left, oh, yeah, did yeah. his high school there, mm -hmm. came here to Oakwood. Mm -hmm. And it just, it gives me so much joy uh, to see the things that he's doing, yes. how God is leading God his life. Is definitely uh, he'll be getting leading, married yes. soon as yep. well. Yep. And man, I could not be more proud of this young man. That is and awesome. And glad to have him with us here today. That is Thank awesome, you. man. That is awesome. Man, Terrell, uh, this is Vision Sunday. This is a place where we get a chance to talk with leaders, mm -hmm. entrepreneurs, business yep. uh, leaders, uh, uh, pastors, right? Yep. I mean, mm -hmm. there's coaches, authors, consultants, people who uh, lead in their space. Correct. And and generally speaking, they have a vision. They have yeah. something inside them that they want to bring to reality. Mm -hmm. And you have experience in yeah. doing that very thing. So we just want to first start off by giving you an opportunity to share a little bit about your journey and okay. who you are and some of the things that God has allowed you to birth and yeah. bring vision to reality. Yeah. And, no, th and thank you all for having me. And I feel like, um, I feel like entrepreneurship, or especially um if you're going into a ceo space it really is sometimes innate in you you know you have some people yeah, that can yeah. be skilled or kind of grow into the skill but then you okay. have that kind of innate ability and mm. i would say from early on when i was back in lexington <laughs> um i definitely say my first time realizing i was going to be in the entrepreneurship spaces i was in elementary school I actually just transferred from a public school to a christian academy and um, I had a pack of now laters. And, now and later. Now man. later. Now later. I had a pack of now laters in my pocket. And I'm about to go in and eat one. And as soon mm -hmm. as I eat one, I get a tap on my shoulder. And there was a girl behind me. And she's like, oh, can I have one? So I give her one. And she's like, wow, like these are really good. I'll mm -hmm. give you a dollar for the pack. 
And keep in mind, the pack said 25 cents. cents. So, mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It said 25 cents on come it on, at the time. So I'm like, sure. You know, I give her the pack, take one out, give her the pack. And like, she's like, wow, like if you have more, you know, let me know tomorrow and, right. well, you know, we can go from there. And it just made me think like, okay. And I went to my corner store um, where I lived and I started grabbing now laters, yeah. lemon hair, come hot on, Cheetos. Wow. You know, at that point, which sure. I didn't know, supply and demand. Yeah. Um, I realized at that moment that, you know, just because um, they might, I felt like they had more privilege than I, there were products or there were services that my mm-hmm. community had that they didn't have mm-hmm. access to. Wow. And you can still market and sell that to no matter what it is. Wow. Even if you felt like it was lesser value. Wow. Um, and I took it, took it the next day, I spent $5 on candy and I sold out. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, wow, like this is something, like this is a very yeah. unique type of brand. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I kept going and it got to the point where I have uh, seven siblings and um, I would give them, I would say it started, once I realized that, I realized I was on to something. And from there, I was like, how can I scale this? Yeah, yeah. Um, and I didn't really know even what scale meant, but I knew that I, if I could do it at my school, could we mm-hmm. do it at other schools? schools. Oh, wow. So on Sunday, I would sit down with my siblings. I remember going to Walmart and I <laughs> bought Walmart. these brief cases yeah. they were like wow. these cd cases and i filled it up with candy and i organized it oh, sneakers here <laughs> you know strawberries whatever the case might be and it's i was CD case. yeah the cd yeah, case yeah, yeah. <laughs> it has a little that's cd good, thing. That's good. <laughs> yeah Listen, and i'm hoping that there is a teenager somewhere yeah. somebody yeah, out yeah, here right the elementary school yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you don't have to wait till you get grown like, exactly there, there's some resources yeah, that they if are. You yeah. apply ingenuity and effort you can be yeah. doing some things right now no definitely do that and i definitely encourage you that um you're never too young to start mm-hmm. and be able to use your resources how to work with people. Working with family was one of the toughest things, but we would do it. I would give them cases every Sunday, every Friday. We will we will add it up. Um, I did a 60-40 split. I took 60%. Come they on, got 40. the 60-40. Um, and, you know, we'll, we'll discuss what didn't sell. Almond yeah. Joys, you know, what stuff like that. You had, yeah, a, you, yeah. had a, you had a post meeting. Yeah, we had a right? post meeting. Oh we were like, goodness. that's not selling. Like, why isn't why it? Why is but it not selling? Yeah, oh, so wow. we like, we that need to replace priceless. that with something else and stuff like that. So we would get, sometimes you get shut down at the school. We're like, okay, we need to, you're a little hot this right is, now. Listen, this, yeah. is yeah. Entire, <laughs> listen, this is an entire master class right now. This is an entire master class. We're literally learning all the different components of your listening. Listening. You're yeah. listening. You're yeah. hearing all the components of business right yeah. now, which is Supply absolutely demand, phenomenal. Supply how to build a team, how to scale. And I feel like from those, they taught me a lot of key things of what I use now today. Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel like as I grew, I kept that as a serial entrepreneur. I have this model that being able to grow a successful company, you either sell or use the funding from that company to go into the next company. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and I feel like that was a very key component to me. So, Terrell, let me ask you a question here, man, because I, I want to make sure that we mine out certain things for our audience today. Yeah. So you you've tried a number of different ventures, mm-hmm. and, and now you know you're the owner of Superhero Chefs, and we'll get into it for, mm-hmm. in just a moment. But just just talk to us about how any vision initiative, how it challenges your faith mm-hmm. as a young Christian. I mean, yeah. you're still a young man, and how do you manage fear of failure? Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. Um, when I read the Bible, I look at kings and CEOs. Okay. Um, and that's one of the biggest things. I try to figure my, out my, what my, is. My, my, my. Just, just say that one more time. Slow that one more time. So when I look at the Bible, I feel like you have to make sure it relates to you. You have to find these gems. And when I look at kings and how they build their empires, I look at them as CEOs. I look okay. at them as ownership. And wow. they have teams. They have people that are over certain things, and they appoint them people. Yeah. They appoint certain people yeah. to run. They have seasons where they have to s- set up for dry seasons. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like it's very important because wow. God is telling you that you're going to have bad seasons in your life. Wow. And these kings are like, That's hey, we're gonna... Joseph's, the yeah. major dream yeah. he interpreted. Yeah. 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 And I feel like that was a dream, letting him know, like as an owner, as a person that has a flock and people that I have leadership over, yeah. I'm letting you know that there's going to be a drought and you have to put the right people in place, place. to make sure mm. that you're good during those times. Because yeah. they're going to come no matter how anointed you are, those seasons will come. Yes, um, that's And good. you have to prepare for that, meaning savings or whatever. So I feel like with entrepreneur is so, it tests your faith all the time. Yeah. I, would, I would strongly advise, I don't know how maybe non-believers don't do yeah. that yeah. Mm, because, <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> because you just don't know. It's a lot of unknowns. Yeah. Mm. And I feel like you have to have that faith in God to realize yeah. like, what is my next step? Wow. Mm-hmm. And I realize one of the key things that I realize is that God gives you your daily bread. Yeah. Mm. And sometimes Ooh. with entrepreneurship, you think that you have to have it all planned out, sure. but God has given that to you on a day-to-day daily, basis. Day-to-day basis. Okay. Each time all I right. wake up, it's like, wow. it, even when it came, and I know I'm saying a lot, but no, no, with the ahead. daily bread, it's like, I have to and take it you know i don't i can't overindulge for the next day yeah, i can't yeah. be upset with what i didn't eat the, 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 the day before the, 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 and you know this, this is the miracle of the manna yeah right? 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 god put it. that in there for the entrepreneurs like yeah. they could not store it for could several store. days in a row yeah. But yeah. you had to kind of trust God each day for that provision. Yeah. And that's a part of the entrepreneur's yeah. journey is not wow. knowing, man, 
for certain, you know yeah. for certain that God will provide, yeah. mm. but the portion and the rhythm of it is not always clear. Yeah, yeah. Okay. it's not. One of, the things, one of the things I just want to interject is, even for the non-believer, mm-hmm. that there is a component of faith that is required in yes. this yeah, 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 yeah. venture. Yeah. I mean, it, so you can call wow. it whatever faith in, faith in yeah. whatever you want to say, yeah. but for you to stay, okay, I'm going to take a chance and start yeah. this, yeah. that's yeah. a component of faith. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, 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 yeah, even when, you're t- when we're talking about the non-believer, yeah. they're still having to approach it in the same, same way, way because yeah. that same uncertainty faces them the same way. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And even with non-believers, um, you can still tap into biblical principles that God just puts laws in a place that yeah. affect no anyone yeah. because right. he gives wealth for anyone. Like the, the benefit of reaping and sowing. It's, mm-hmm. it's, if you sow that, if whether whatever you oh. believe, if you're sowing that, mm-hmm. you're going to get that back. Wow. And that's why you have people that are like, I'm going to donate half of my fortune. You're like, how do they get that back? Like right. I remember reading a story about Bill Gates. He was like, I'm yep. giving my 50% yep. pledge. Yep. And it's like you get that back because there are just certain things once you put out there, like it just is cause and effect. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And like that's that's the other thing. It's a lot of people that it's like, dang, if you're spiritual, you wanna you if you are religious and you are Christian, <laughs> you definitely should be tapping in because even people yeah. that are not, they're tapping they're into tapping these things into yeah. and they're benefiting. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> so yeah. clearly, it's something you know yeah, something that's, out there. That's so serious, yeah, it's definitely um, the faith trial. I would say the other thing is just um, it just being able to see God daily. Yeah, mm. um, I I can't I so how I structure myself. I actually signed a contract with God. Um, on, I actually, I try to make it as practical as possible. <laughs> so okay. All right, let me in, in business, there's this thing called operating agreement. Okay. And when it comes to operating agreement, you want to make sure that you are, it's agreement that says who, what is everyone's role? And that mm. means who's the CEO, mm. who's yeah. the CFO, oh. yeah. you know, marketing, whatever the person yeah. might be. And yeah. you have this your board. Good. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is so you have your board of trustees. And one of the things I didn't know if I could do, I was like, can I do an operating agreement with God? I mean, if I'm supposed to be stewarding what it is, Come I need to on. sign an agreement with him. He's my board of trustees. trustees. And if he, yeah. anything you know about board of trustees, they rule everything. Yeah. Like, these are the people that are above the CEO, that are above yeah. these people that are in power. And the thing oh, about it is, it the board yeah. of trustees allows you to take all the credit. Yeah. yeah. They yeah. just sit back. Half of them don't mm. even know who the board of trustees wow. are. Yeah. You know, they just want to be, you know, they you know, they just want to be behind the scenes. They want you to be, um, you know, to do what you have to do. They be give you all the gears, right, right. yeah. success and stuff like that. So I literally drew up a contract and I said, hey, God, I'm going to be over this particular entity and I'm signing this over Mm -hmm. to you. And one thing that you have to do before you come into work, you have to uh, report to someone. Yeah. Yeah. If you're not reporting Ooh, to someone, that's a word, you're doing work that all day. Word, I was literally telling somebody yeah. the whole day, like yeah. they were asking me about like biblical principles and how you report to God and how do you look at seeking God yeah. and my, how can it be relatable my, to you? My. I say, just imagine going to work every day, doing a whole bunch of work and you never asked your boss, what am I supposed to do? Right. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. You oh, did wow. a lot of work. Never right. asked. And you're really yeah. wondering why you're not reading your goals, right. why God, why the boss is not promoting you. Mm. Come on, yeah. <laughs> you know, so why is he not yeah. taking you to the next level? Mm. You didn't even ask him what he was supposed what, to what do. Am supposed yeah. to, what am I supposed to do? What did you, you have on my agenda? Mm. You never asked for assignment. So you're yeah. asking God like, dang, I want to be blessed. Dang, I want to do this. But you never even mm. seek God first to say, yeah. hey, what am I supposed to do? And you realize like, you might have only could have done that one thing mm. and you could have been done for the rest of the yeah. day. Yeah. Oh, wow. You could have done five yeah. things. It could work the other way. You could do less work if you're doing it right. Word, yes. Mercy. God yes. doesn't have a regular math. His 10x, 20x, yeah. it never matches. It never um, calculates with our thing. So when I related to that, I realized like, God, okay, it's not just scripture. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. not just like, oh, I'm just going to wake up and do my devotion. I really don't know what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. So I really want to make sure I'm calculated because time is way more valuable than money. And that's sure. a whole other topic I'm going to hit on. But yeah. Um, but it's just one of those things like you got to be very cautious in that yeah. um, mm-hmm. and knowing that seeking God, making sure that you're, you know, putting him first and getting yeah. that daily bread on yeah. assignment. Man. So, so wow. quick question yeah. here. So like, so you're the CEO of a, of a restaurant here in Huntsville. Mm-hmm. It is, it is my personal favorite. You can find me yeah. frequently, yeah, yeah. Uh, routinely <laughs> superhero chefs uh, here in town. Um, but you, you manage a staff, you mm-hmm. manage people. And even though in some ways these may be employees, mm-hmm. there are certain leadership principles that really kind of, they yeah. Transfer, yeah. transfer, whether you're leading mm-hmm. volunteers, a mm-hmm. church group, uh, you know, a, a, a small company or a large company. Yeah. What are some of the principles that you kind of embrace that help you govern the way you interact with the people you lead? Not yeah. just people you employ, but the people you lead. Yeah, um, I feel like the, the first thing is, of course, putting yourself, that they're human. 
Um, mm-hmm. I think when you have leadership, you good. have to realize not, that like I am his pastor. <laughs> 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 the Lord is doing the work in this, brother. Yeah, yeah. I'm so excited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah, got yeah. a Solomon like wisdom. Yeah. Uh, God is it is. It is. Yeah. yeah, they're um, human. That's you're good. human. Yeah. Um, and I realized that um, when you have that, that they're human and they they have their own lives and everyone is mm-hmm. going through their whole thing. You have to realize that um, I remember the first time I realized that they were human. I, when I opened my first restaurant, mm-hmm. I was doing the scheduling and I knew mm-hmm. nothing about scheduling. I put someone on the schedule and it was between two people and I just put the person on the schedule. And one of the people came on Friday and they were like, hey, you didn't put me on the schedule for today and my lights are going to get cut off. Yeah. And he was like, you put Ooh. the girl on the schedule and she's a student in school and mm-hmm. she can afford to do this, but wow. this actually impacts me. Sure. And like, I have to leave early because I have to figure out some way to get some quick cash because right you know, I have a family. And mm-hmm. in my head, I realized like, wow, like this, I'm impacting people's lives. Mm-hmm. At that point, so I really, realized that yeah. my people survive off of my success. Mm-hmm. And that's a very yeah. different type of pressure. Sure. It's a weight. Yeah. It's a weight, yeah. it's a weight. It's a weight. Um, yeah. And that's what I'm saying, like when you have your staff, as you're leading them, you're now realizing like, dang, I have to be a little bit more detailed, mm-hmm. getting mm-hmm. to know who they are, because yeah. I would, I didn't even know who no, he was. Yeah. Yeah. What's your name? What? Yeah. How many people you have yeah. in your family? I didn't realize like, he had a big family, two people worked there, right. so yeah. clearly they're trying to make a living off sure. of that. So that means getting to know them, that's mm-hmm. very key. Sure. Getting to know the people that are on your team so you can be able to relate to them and, and kind of put yourself in their, in their footsteps. Um, I think just, to, it's leading by example. Sure. Yeah, example. Um, I example. feel that yeah. if you are going to be an operator, if you're a CEO, someone that's going to physically see you in the act, and you and maybe um, it's like a scale thing, you want to make sure that you are um, letting them see you work, mm-hmm. so that they can f- appreciate you more and know that you're willing to get your hands in dirty yeah. as well. So, mm-hmm. Ooh, good that's, stuff. Good stuff. No, there's there's a lot there. Mm-hmm. There's a lot there. Um, talk talk to us a little bit about the the vision side of it. Now, you 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 started multiple mm-hmm. uh, ventures, multiple businesses. Um, you are, you're in, in you're, you have a couple uh, restaurants now, right? Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's two, is it? Yeah. So, <laughs> and I, yeah, <laughs> I <guess not. laughs> but, but the, the, the idea, or I guess the, the, the kernel question that we generally ask mm-hmm. here is you had a vision at some mm-hmm. point and then between having the vision and mm-hmm. actually seeing the vision come to reality, what was that like or that process? And then two, is the is what you're doing now what you saw in vision? Um, definitely, I didn't see myself in the restaurant industry at all. Yeah. Like okay. I'm just gonna be, I'm just gonna be blunt. When I graduated from Oakwood, I, well, actually, no, I was still a senior when I um, I went to Atlanta. And when I was in Atlanta, there was this business class, and we were at this table, and there was a guy um, that we were always like five of us from Oakwood that sitting at this particular table, and I asked him what he did, mm-hmm. and he said, "Oh, I'm a I own McDonald's." and franchises and own like Denny's and BP gas stations and stuff like that. Yeah. And I was like, McDonald's, like, and I remember going to it as a kid, getting the Happy Meal stuff. Mm-hmm. He's like, yeah, I'm a franchise owner. I was like, what is that? He was like, you know, you're franchise owners, you can actually own these things. I'm mm-hmm. like, whoa, that just blew my mind. Wow. He looked, you know, he was my skin color. He was a little older gentleman. Mm-hmm. And I was like, how did you get started? And he was like, I started in college. He mm-hmm. said, McDonald's had this lease to own program. I applied for it. I wrote a check, didn't have the money in my account. And then by the time I made that money during the weekend, I had enough to clear. Like he wrote mm-hmm. the check in faith, and by that time it took a little Mercy. while. And just hearing his story, I think that goes to your point that sometimes you have to see the vision yeah. before What's you possible. have to see the future. And future. it's like, wow, like if he yeah. did that in college, I'm looking, I'm in college, and I got right. a lot, we got a lot more resources, mm-hmm. you know, that can yeah. shorten this what, process. What possible, you know, what right. could be possible with me? And also just being able to be in community with people that are doing it on their scale. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I didn't even Rubbing know that was shoulders. something possible. Like yeah. you're okay. saying, you on five. Yeah. You telling me one McDonald's at 1.5 million in California, like that was yeah. at an early stage. So I can't mm-hmm. imagine where what he's at now. his peak. Yeah. Um, and when I was like, whoa, like that's something. So I said, keep me on mentor. And from that, he mentored me for a year, mm-hmm. probably that's six months. Point. And then that, when I saw him literally build a Bojangles from scratch, mm. I said, I got this. Gotcha. Like, yeah. I was like, I, I want to be in the industry. I don't know. And I knew something about service. Like, mm. I was like, hey, this is the industry. Trust me, it's a lot. It's service. It's a service, <laughs> service. industry. Yeah. Let me ask you something. <laughs> so, like, even when you kind of seeking out mentorship, mentorship. asking questions. Right. And one of the things I noticed about Terrell, even I may bring a guest or a friend with me to the restaurant. Oh. And when he finds out who they, he will ask, what do you think about marriage? What do you think about this? Mm. Are you just a naturally naturally curious, curious. person? Yeah. Yeah. Or is this just kind of like a, a core value that you just mm. try to implement wherever you can? Yeah. 
So yes, I'm definitely naturally curious. So I kind of want to know um, what, where am I going? So that's why I want to know. Cause I don't really, I feel like you could take something from everyone. Mm. And there's a lot of fields that I want to be role rounded. Yeah. So when I even asked about marriage, one of the mm -hmm. things I do see is like a lot of unhappy marriages when it gets to the top. Yeah. So it's like, I want to make sure like I am putting that first. Like I remember one of the sayings that me and my fiance have is hustle hard, but um, um, Hustle, love harder. Love harder. Um, okay. Because it's one of those models is that like you're gonna hustle hard, like that's innate, but you really yeah. gotta love harder. And what mm -hmm. are we doing to really bring that in? Yeah. Um, so that's what I would say. Like I just want to take as much because mm -hmm. we have so many resources. Yeah. Like it's so many people that can like give you knowledge, and I yeah. believe that your knowledge can shortcut me, so I don't have to go through the that's same mistakes. The point. Yeah. That's it. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to yeah. like I don't have to. I'm not. I don't in need that, to. I don't right. need to burn no. the, my hand on the, <laughs> the stove. stove. No, no, no. You burn your hand. Okay, cool. Okay, yeah, I did it. That's good enough for me. Yeah, that's good enough for me. But that's 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 a quality that mm -hmm. is, uh, yeah. you know, I don't, you know, in 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 the different generations that are there now, yeah. I, even in my generation, people wanted to learn on their own. They yeah. wanted to have those experiences for themselves. Yeah. Yeah. But I want to say a word of thanks, man. There's yeah. there's yeah. so much that immense value, even mm -hmm. in some of the quick things that he was yeah. sharing yeah. here, mm -hmm. some of the stories that you yeah. you've you've uh, been able to dialogue with us on so many uh, uh, nuggets of wisdom that we yeah. can draw from. Yeah. And we're excited that you be able to bring you in yeah. uh, to share with the Vision you, Sunday You're gonna have to audience. come back, because yeah. I know you yeah, got some yeah, other things in the fire that yeah. you'll be able to testify to, uh, yeah. just the way God is moving. Yeah. Uh, just do me, a favor, do me a favor, give a quick mm -hmm. word in closing mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, to, yeah. to maybe somebody that's maybe in their 20s, 30s. Yeah. Man, they, they've got something swelling on the inside yeah. of them. Mm. Don't quite know what to do with it. What, what yeah. would you say to them? Um, I'll say my number one key as I close is that um, you want to make sure that you find whatever the highest field that you want to go into, find a mentor in that space mm. and really connect with that mentor, whether it's following them on their social medias or whether you're actually fully connecting with them because that's going to be the easiest, I wouldn't say the shortest way, but that's going to be the easiest way that you can be able to get to where you want to be. You have to sometimes see the vision if you can't create it yourself. Nice. So yeah. I would say if you're young, you want to do it, really go in and research that person, understand what they're a part right. of, what yeah. they're doing, mm -hmm. because that's going, once you get in community, mm -hmm. it's, you can do so much in community yeah. and your mind expands. You have these conversations that you mm -hmm. would never thought you would have to have. So get in community and then the rest is gonna fall because they're gonna give you opportunities just by default. Like, oh, I don't want this contract. Yeah. You got it, I'm gonna <laughs> give it to you, you know, yeah, cause their true. caliber is that's a lot true. higher. So get in that community and really master that art, master that field. And that's the season I'm in now. And that's just good, man. It. Man, just tell, take one more second just to tell people where they can find you, follow you, what yeah. you yeah, yeah, some of those things. Um, so right now I'm with the Superhero Chef brand. So, um, but you can follow me on Instagram, Mister Time ninety three, and that's my brand. But I really just promote entrepreneurship. I mentor a lot of people on student entrepreneurship. I have a book called The Dorm CEO of How to Become a CEO <laughs> While You're in CEO. School. Love yeah. it. Um, but if you any anything in the restaurant industry, definitely um, we're um, right in Huntsville, Alabama, and, um, and Mid City area. So if you ever want to stop by the restaurant, grab some great brunch and breakfast food, definitely yeah. come by and see oh, you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Excellent. It's thank the spot. You. Yeah, man, thank you so much. Oh, definitely. So proud of you, man. <laughs> yeah. I, can't, I can't wait for the folk in Lexington uh, to, <laughs> to see this. Man, this is going to be it's gonna be good, man. Yeah, God bless. No, definitely. We are back with another segment where we share some of the things that annoy us. I want this to be cathartic. I want this to be a space where we do this together. Uh, there's so many different things that people do that we may not necessarily like, and I like to call this our pet peeves. Uh, we shared several of them with you over the past few weeks, but I wanna share with you one today, and it is on assumptions. Assumptions, making assumptions about people and their motives, making assumptions about why somebody did something, about why something happened the way that it did without getting all the information. Assumptions can erode what we think of people, especially if we allow those assumptions to hold fast as fact, right? As, as something that is actual, that has actually happened. Assumptions aren't actually real, right? We, we have to make sure we leave room for those assumptions to be incorrect. I think that this might have happened or it could have happened this way are ways that we can remind ourselves that the truth is still somewhere out there. One of the things that just, you know, get under my skin is when people assume that it happened this way, that they did it because of this, or we are in the shape that we're in because we didn't do this. When we take time to stay neutral, 
when we take time to think the best of others, we can stave off several different types of issues that can happen in the leader's journey. So let's stay clear of assumptions. Man, we are always Im impressed and excited mm -hmm. and, and refreshed, man. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. there's so much revelation that comes out of these discussions yeah. with our guests, and we hope that you're resonating with it as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Vision Sunday, y'all. Vision Sunday. This is what this space has been created for, yeah. and we're excited that you are here for the journey with us. One of the ways that you can continue that journey with us is by subscribing by hitting that subscribe button right now, by, by hitting the share button as well. Yeah. Uh, but we want to make sure you guys get notified when we have new content yeah. and when we go live. Listen, be, you're part of a community. You're That's part right. of a community. Right. So we want you to go ahead and like or subscribe so mm -hmm. that, you know, every time something fresh comes out, you can be right there in front of the oven. That's right. And, and, and we also have the app. I always want to make sure you guys know the Breath of Life app is there both on Android and on iOS. And we want to make sure you guys get a chance to take advantage of that. All kinds of new and exciting mm -hmm. content specifically made with you in mind yep. in the app. So we want to make sure you guys get a chance to engage with that. Doc, what are some other ways that they can engage with us? So again, we just ask that you would share. Listen, if you're on YouTube right now, just copy the link, send it to somebody. You need to share this. The things that Terrell shared, the, you know, the, the you know, our, our, our core values. values yeah. you, you need to kind of pump that out. You need to be a conduit through which other people can be blessed. Uh, we ask for your continued prayers. But one of the ways you can give, if you have value for what you received today, mm. I'm going to ask you to sow into that. Uh, there's some ways that you can give that are coming up on the screen right now to the Breath of Life ministry. Again, you're not giving to me. You're giving to the ministry that That's is right. going to feed right. millions. So you can give online at www.breathoflife.tv. You can give by mail at uh, P.O. Box 5960, Huntsville, Alabama 35814. You can give by phone. You can give us a call, 256-929-6460. Or you can text the phrase, give to BOLTV to 188-364-GIVE. Or one of the easiest Come ways on. to do it, like right now, <laughs> just pick up your phone, man, just cash app us at dollar sign, breathoflife.tv. We're excited to be able to diversify our content. We're excited to be able to send our broadcasts to new cities. We're, we're excited that this year we're going to be laying out a whole new line of children's ministry mm, content as well, excellent. along with the things that you're seeing each Sunday on Fresh Start Sunday. So uh, your ministry is helping us. You're going to see it evolve in real time. And we know that as you give, God is going to bless you in an immense way. Join us next week for Scripture Lab, where we'll be back with Pastor Snell right here for Fresh Start Sunday.